from the Catholic underground. Today on the show, are we selling out if we go Christmas shopping? We reveal some of our wish list items and attempt to keep the magnetic stripes cool in our credit cards, our picks of the week, so much more. The Gathering Underground starts now. Alrighty, it's time for the Catholic Underground, your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. We're deep in the season of Advent. It's episode number 249. I'm Father Chris Decker. If you're listening live, you can join us at catholicunderground.tv and get your chat on. A special welcome to those of you listening to us on YouTube Live on our CUTV live stream. Joining me this week, we've got Father Ryan Humphreys. He's the rector of the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in historic Natchitoches, Louisiana. He wears a funny hat, and he's with us. Hello, Father. Hello, people. We've also got uh, Kathleen Lee. She's a teacher at St. Joseph's Academy in Baton Rouge, and she is our licensed faith ninja. Hey, Kathleen. Good to be here. Yes, indeed. And Mary-Kate Taylor is deep in the video cave. Uh, Hey, Mary-Kate over there. All right. Well... It's Advent, as we said, and it's getting really close to the Christmas season, right? Yeah, I know, Kathleen, you're you're all a Twitter. Mm-hmm. Not actually on Twitter, though. No, I am on Twitter, but... But you don't tweet about being ready for Christmas. Not yet. Not yet. There you go. So, it goes without saying that people are, you know, getting into gear and thinking, maybe I should start thinking about Christmas shopping. And so we thought that this might be a good episode, especially since we have you, our radio audience, to uh, talk a little bit about getting stuff for Christmas. What kind of gifts would you give? And now what you may say, and, and Father Ryan, I can already hear the, uh, the clamor, but you're Catholic. You shouldn't be talking about all this stuff. That's right. It's too early. It's not Christmas yet. It's Advent. That's right. Now, and so so yeah. you ought not to be getting too wound up about all the, the stuff. At the same time, though, Yeah. Advent is a season of preparation, True. and so you ought not to be giving gifts, mm. but yeah. you ought that doesn't have anything necessarily to do with preparing to give them. Just as as I might very well buy your birthday present, Father Chris Decker, months and months in advance, but I'm not giving it to you, no matter how much you ask. Oh man! Oh well, July is not that far away, <laughs> I suppose. So yeah, the Halloween candy is still on the shelves, but like some sort of a virus, Kathleen, the small section of Christmas lights in the garden center slowly morphs oh, yeah. and overtakes the big box store, and by Thanksgiving Day, the cancer of Christmas cards and box deodorant sets and carols over the loudspeaker has engulfed the store like some sort of a consumerist cancer. And we know the scriptures say that no servant can serve two masters, right? Jesus says he'll either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve, Jesus says famously, both God and mammon. And and Father, mammon is one of our favorite words to say. It really is. Mm -hmm. I I love that image. But at the same time, it's also, I think it's very, very real. I mean, of all the idols that people make um, in the world right now, perhaps even more than than sexuality, it it is mammon. It's wealth. It's the power that comes from wealth. That is the realest of all of the the idols, so to speak, that are made. That's right. And the, the Hebrew understanding of mammon, uh, from from what uh, I've been able to glean from the translation, is that mammon is that which one makes an idol, that, sh- that which one desires and uh, kind of puts all of his or her stock into. And for us, mammon very much is our consumerist culture. As you say, Father, even more than, than a disfigured notion of sexuality— it's so easy to get stuff. And, of course, we saw with Amazon, Amazon is now testing drones. <laughs> did you see that, Kathleen? I did. And I did see all the, all the you know, comments about if you shoot one down, do you get to keep the, the thing that it was transporting? I mean, this is totally the Hunger hmm. Games, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I'm kind of excited about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so we really do uh, kind of become over over emphasizing uh, we in our culture but as you say father we're about preparation and uh, one of the things that should be our primary concern that we know is is building up treasure in heaven and not seeking and expecting stuff at every turn i know kathleen always expects a latte to be waiting for she has a very long rider on her contract yes, mm-hmm. yeah yeah um, but uh, you know when it becomes dangerous for for us is whenever, as you say, Father, we love one for money and money alone, whenever we begin to distort those relationships. 
Right. I mean, money is not a bad thing. You know, some people would say, well, in the light of, of Pope Francis's, you know, first uh, apostolic exhortation, that somehow or another money is a bad thing. And it's really not. Money is, is just an intermediary. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing really at all unless we make it into something more than it is. You know, money is just something we trade to get something we want. And so we ought not to, to think that somehow or another it's a bad thing to have it or it's a bad thing to, to, you know, not to have it. But at the same time, we ought to be very cautious, as you say, about making idols of it or, frankly, making idols of somebody else's money. You know, I mean, it's, it's entirely possible to say, oh, well, I've got a couple of friends who are really super generous, so I'm going to be extra nice to them this time of year so that they, uh, you know, they give me the right gift or I'm not going to call them out on an habitual sin that God has been putting on my heart to call them out on because I don't want to lose out on those great Christmas presents. Oh, wow, that's a, that's an excellent point. So we can actually, in a sense, almost make the person mammon. because well, Yeah, I mean, you really can. That's something. I hadn't really thought about that. I guess I'm going to have to stop being nice to Kathleen. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, even Jesus uh, recognizes that when he talks about the Pharisees uh, who loved money, according to uh, the scripture says. It says, the Pharisees who loved money heard all these things when Jesus was talking about dishonest stewards and, can- and not being able to serve two masters. They heard all these things and they sneered at him. And Jesus says in Luke uh, chapter 16, you justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. And that's really what we're, we're talking about when we begin to speak about consumerism in our culture and this time of year, we're, we're, we're asking the question, um, what is in the heart whenever we give, right? God loves a cheerful giver. We know that, that phrase from the Old Testament. Uh, and so that's what we're talking about whenever we, we uh, expound on this show, what maybe some of the gift ideas uh, could be for, for you, for, um, for those as you, as you choose uh, to, to give gifts during this holiday season. So, I suppose the question is, Father Ryan, would you say, is it okay to buy stuff during the holidays? Oh, yeah, I think it's fine. I, it's it's not a, a anything I think that's particularly a moral thing. Now, it is, we have to be very aware. You know, if I've got a kid I'm buying for, I ought not to spoil that child. If I've got a friend I'm buying for, I ought not to, to put uh, that person's soul in danger by buying something that is, you know, outside of, of reason. I ought not to... Uh, put myself in financial harm by wanting to overspend out of some kind of vague sense of peer pressure. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, Father, I was actually seriously considering I had a gift for you, but the cost, the price tag was $50. Lord. And I said, <laughs> you know, I said, it's, it's this perfect. Father Chris would love this gift. He would jump in now like a crazy person, but it's $50. And right. I just don't have $50 to spend on, a, on a, a gift that would get 30 seconds of amusement. You know, and so so there's a certain sense where we ought to, we can't let go of our human reason. We ought right. not to let go of our moral reason. But there's nothing at all morally wrong with preparing for a celebration um, at a time when, hey, you know, there's lots of sales and that's what people are doing. That's right. And so uh, perhaps a few of the connections on why we give gifts. Uh, one that comes to my mind immediately is is the Magi, uh, those three wise men who, who traveled afar. We know the song. And they come to Jesus, and the scriptures tell us they opened their treasures before him. Now, but these treasures had a dual meaning, right? They, they weren't just earthly goods. I think more than a dual meaning. It's one of those things where each of them has so many, many meanings. Yeah, a you know, polyvalent you have, meaning. Right. You have, you have the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Of course, they represent the kingship of Christ, the prophet prophetic nature of Christ in the, in the frankincense, and then the priestly nature of Christ in his death and the myrrh. But then again, you also have uh, other other kind of spiritual meanings associated with them by church fathers. Or, yeah. you know, I, I preached last year in Advent Mission about the idea that the gold is the least important because it is the most earthly of the gifts. And then the frankincense is the prayer, the spiritual life we offer up. You know, so you have the, I'm going to offer up my earthly life, then my spiritual life, and that culminates when I'm going to offer my entire life with the giving of myrrh, which is the funeral essence. And so I think there, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of interpretations and, and spiritual food that you could glean from the gift giving of these three magi. That's right. And so perhaps uh, as we give our earthly gifts to, to folks, to our friends, to our family, we might, uh, and oftentimes we do this. I know this is the kind of, uh, the way that I give gifts is, as you know, Father, uh, I don't just kind of blanketly say, okay, well, I'm just getting everybody, you know, a gift certificate to the Red Lobster this year. 
Uh, I, I don't do that because I'm a very intentional giver. And so there's usually a reason behind the gift that I give, which is why I tend to give things outside of holiday season. If I see something that in some way connects me to that person, uh, either it, it's a, an inside joke that we both shared or or maybe there's even a, an element of prayer of, 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 my, of my spiritual reality with that person, um, that's usually when I'll give a gift. And so sometimes uh, whenever we give gifts, that notion of, of maybe making a spiritual connection. I'm, I'm giving this to you, but there's another reason I'm giving it. It, it, may, it may just be an earthly gift, but there perhaps is another gift to it, too. Do you do that, Kathleen? Yeah, I, um, I think I've spoken about this before. My love language is gift giving. Um, so I don't give, I also don't give blank, blanket gifts. It drives me crazy. So um, whatever gift I give you has been thought out, has been Pre-planned. researched, yeah. has been you know bought with, with intention, so, and so that's why Kathleen sometimes will give a gift that's greater than the 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 white elephant cutoff. You know, oh, usually I hate the white <laughs> elephant cutoff. Yeah, because it's just like twenty bucks, and yeah. you're like, oh, what can you give for twenty bucks? A stick yeah. of gum now. Yeah, right. but to me, that you know, and, and I'll I will spend more more than I should mm-hmm. sometimes on a gift just because of, and, and I you know I, I I reason it with, is it something that I can spend? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That that's you know, going with the, the meaning of the gift and, and, you know, not so much in por- proportion to how much that person means to me, uh, but how much I want that gift to be something between us. To communicate your heart. Yes. As it were. Yeah. And, and we know, Father Ryan, that there is actually a tradition of gift giving, both in the East and in the West. In our Western culture, um, it actually goes back to, uh, to Charles Dickens, right? Well, to the time of Charles yeah. Dickens. Yeah. The the idea of, of Christmas as a special celebration uh, is actually remarkably young. You know, mm-hmm. there, there were, uh, going back very, very far, kind of the three great feasts of Michaelmas, yep. Christmas, and Easter. You know, and these were, were the three great feasts, but there was nothing particularly cultural about the celebrations. They just marked certain times of year. Yeah. And in the uh, the early kind of Dickensian era, that is the seven, late 1700s, early 1800s in England, the idea of the giving of gifts to the very poor mm-hmm. um, rose up, at, you know, in, in different quarters for different reasons. And so in the, in the UK, they still have Boxing Day, the yes. day after Christmas, when you give, you box up things that you want to give as gifts, and you give gifts away. And of course, that tradition comes to us. And um, and and we give gifts here for the same sort of reasons. Before that, in the in the West, the tradition goes back to Hanukkah, when uh, when you give gifts for for these eight consecutive nights in memory of the uh, the 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 salvation of of Israel that came about through the work of the Maccabees. Yeah. Um, go okay. ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that that that's a that's an interesting uh, correlation to make because sometimes we, in, especially in the Christian world. We'll say Happy Hanukkah, but we don't actually make the gift giving a connection to it because we don't always know the history. Right, and and what I love about the Hanukkah thing is is that it's not a, a tradition of gift receiving. Yes, it's about the giving of the gift, mm-hmm. and um, you know, which which ties in very well with what Kathleen said because in the West we've gotten into the mentality that it's about the receiving of gifts, and so rather than the gift being meant to communicate something, we've now gotten the idea the gift needs to be useful. It needs to be something that that person's really going to get something out of as opposed to it just being something that, that says, here, this is a communication of my love for you yeah. because now it's about getting and not about giving. Hmm. And that's true. become the thing and the problem in the West. Now, in the East, the tradition is not that way. It's, a very, it's about very small symbolic gifts. And, of course, you don't get those gifts at Christmas. You get them at Epiphany. And, of course, that's the feast of when the Magi came and brought their gifts to Christ. That is correct. And so, yes, we, we, uh, we go through all of this to, to say that, yes, it's okay to give gifts. In fact, the giving is very important. Huh? And, and it's interesting because oftentimes whenever you intend to give a gift and either the gift breaks or something like that, the person will say more often than not, well, it's import- the, the important thing is that you thought of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there's a lot of truth to that. That yes, it, it, the the important thing is that we're we're thinking we're trying to communicate our love to the other person. So all that to say, uh, it is okay to to plan for gift giving. It is okay to give gifts. And uh, the the only danger, of course, is whenever we begin to make the receiving of the gifts uh, kind of a mammon, you know. And so uh, with that, we'll uh, we'll move on. Mm-hmm. 
You're listening to The Catholic Underground. We are online at catholicunderground.tv. I am Father Chris Decker, joined by Father Ryan Humphreys. We've got Kathleen Lee here in the studio and Mary Kate Taylor, who is in the casting cave. Uh, our picks of the week are coming up actually right now because this is a very special episode where we've talked first about uh, the spirituality of giving, and now we will talk about some of the things we can give. And Present! Ka- Kathleen is excited about this. So we thought we would, would spend the rest of the show in kind of a special way um, talking about some of the recommendations that we as the Catholic Underground have for you who, who might be heading out there. Now, we can actually provide something that maybe um, your regular news channels wouldn't provide in that uh, we want you to be able to give a gift that, that may be spiritual in nature, that may have a Catholic message to it, and we want to be able to to empower you to give some some good wholesome gifts too, uh, and then of course just some fun things too. So so we we've split it up into several categories. Uh, Father, I actually did the splitting up into categories, and and for once you didn't have to do it. It's it's a small miracle. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a the, small uh, advent the, miracle. The non OCD among us uh, to create a categories, and when you when you said I've got an idea for a list of categories, I I, I lit up a little inside. <laughs> That's right. You're starting to rub off on me after. Golly, how long have we been friends? Since uh, 1998, I think. That's a long time. It is a long time. That's, golly, it's a good thing we don't live in the same apartment. It would be at each other's throats. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's the list. Uh, books of a non-faith category, books of a faith category, and then, of course, we have stuff religious and stuff and tech not necessarily religious. So we're going to start with the books of a non-faith category. And Kathleen has morphed her computer into tablet mode well, I, here. Yeah. Oh, I can't, yeah. Oh, you can't move it. I see. I didn't. I can't that, see. That's really weird mic. to see her ca- her computer do that. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. If you're watching us on the video feed, her computer mm. just morphed into tablet mm. mode. So, um, so let's see. Uh, how, how shall we start? I tell you what, Kathleen, you're actually a big fan of, we've talked about it before, the Divergent series. Yes. You know, and, 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 for those of you who are looking for something to give young adults, I mean, my brother is in his early 30s, and he enjoys these as well. Um, you know, The Hunger Games is good. Um, my focus right now is the Divergent series. They just came out in October with the third of the Divergent series. It's Divergent, Insurgent, and now the third one is Allegiant. And, and, um, and, and uh, it's very good, easy read. There's not a lot of, um, you know... Um, over rom- like romance and mushy stuff, um, but there's also you know um, as much as as there is fighting. I guess for the, that the guys would like the fighting and all that. Um, it's just really good, really well thought out, a really good reflection on um, on uh, society. Yeah. So I like them a lot. I you know I I've considered giving the third book um, as a gift to to a few people. Oh, very cool. So and, that's and, my pick. And Father Ryan, like you like the Divergent series as well. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I've I've read the Divergent series twice, and it's it's like the Hunger Games if the Hunger Games book two and three hadn't stunk. It's really <laughs> really good, um, and and I thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, all the kids at at my school, my Catholic high school, are reading it mm. you know, with great interest, and so uh, it seems to have landed and really caught on with the fifteen to twenty year old uh, crowd. Which of which of course we all know that that Father Ryan at heart is still a twenty year old, and so there you go. <laughs> the Divergent. If only series. that's right. That's not what my blood pressure says. Hoy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but I <laughs> yeah. I do recommend. I love when when we recommend reading material, and yeah. and sometimes yeah, you want to find what's new and cool. Divergent, The Hunger Games, The Legend series by I think uh, Veronica Wu maybe or, or Vivian Wu. Uh, Harry Potter is still a you know a great choice. Um, I also really think that it's time for us to realize that younger kids like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, you can go to audible.com slash Catholic Underground or audible uh, trial yeah. com slash Catholic Underground. Uh, Lord of the Rings is a great audio book. Uh, it's the kind of book you listen to for 30 minutes before you go to bed with your kids. It takes you, you know, months to listen to, and it's awesome. Um, the Hobbit is wonderful for younger kids. I don't think we need to uh, underestimate the value of Shakespeare. Really? Remember, Shakespeare yeah. um, in audiobook form is rarely more than three hours long. You know, and so in one week, if you listen for 35, 40 minutes a night with your children— um, you know, you've, you're making your way through these classic pieces of literature. And now some Shakespeare is largely unaccessible. You know, I mean, <laughs> it just is. It's hard but to understand. Some, right. It's, it's not easy. But, but some of it, I mean, you know, Julius Caesar and things are wonderfully accessible and they've got good things to teach. 
I also want to encourage parents to read Anthony Ezelin's excellent book, 10 Ways to Destroy the Imagination of Your Child. Um, it's obviously one of those books like Screw Tape Letters of What Not to Do, but it is excellent for, for really encouraging parents especially to make sure that they're paying attention to their children's imaginations and not just simply picking whatever seems good or just doing whatever, you know, the Kindle Fire recommends this month. That's right, because the Kindle Fire now actually can recommend those things if you press the May Day button. <laughs> Have you seen yeah. that? Oh, it's awesome. It's so cool. I yeah, I'm a I'm a little afraid of it actually. A mayday well, button. People have drones. Yeah, <laughs> they do have drones. They've got the mayday button, you know. Yeah. I um I, I really find the the Shakespeare connection really interesting, Father, because oftentimes I think, at least for me, my connection with Shakespeare goes back to very difficult times in my English class in middle school and in high school. You know, and you have to learn all of the soliloquies, and you have to learn this and learn that, and you have to recite. And of course, those are those are exercises that are important. But I, as a as a young person, I wasn't in the place where I could appreciate Shakespeare or really any classical literature, and so it's it's kind of difficult to go back and um, and and re-examine Shakespeare without that kind of jaundiced eye. But I really think that's a, a good challenge to say, yeah, read it with your kids because some of those stories you certainly could. Well, those stories are written for the mob. You know, I yeah. mean, they're written for for a very low intelligence level, and um, you know, I, I think I'm too perfect. many teachers just <laughs> rejoice in ruining yeah. great literature by by insisting that we learn stupid and tedious biographies. Like this, yeah. it's, it's true of um, of Dante. Yes, you know, if you're going to read Dante, just dive in and read eight or ten of the cantos in Inferno, and you're going to be hooked. But if you've got to spend two weeks in class listening to the biography of this incredibly boring individual and then <laughs> right. choking down, you know, the Bella Vita um, or, or, or whatever it is, the uh, Buena Vita or whatever it is, the good life, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, but there are so many just wonderful stories and Shakespeare's stories themselves are astounding. I mean, did you read, did you realize Pride and Prejudice, one of the greatest books in the English language? is a cheap knockoff of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Right, it's exactly. A, it's exactly a knockoff. So I think we just need to dive in and get into the storylines and not be bogged down by the language or anything like that. Yeah, and that's a that's a, a good challenge. So if you're listening, audibletrial.com slash Catholic Underground, I bet all Shakespeare's on there. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain it is. So my recommendations of non-faith-based books, uh, I'm a big fan, I've talked about him before, um, uh, Bill Bryson, who is uh, kind of part philologist, part philosopher, part walker about. And, uh, and he, he's from, I believe, Iowa, um, the land of Jim Kirk, Captain Kirk. Um, but uh, but he, he, <laughs> he, he spent most of his time in England. And so he has a very singular British wit, though he is an American. And uh, he's written a number of books, and uh, I'd recommend a, a lot of them for, I would say, the, the, the 20 or 18 and older crowd, uh, just because he's, well, you know, singular British wit. Sometimes you can get into some, some hairy language. But uh, Bill Bryson is writing about his uh, voyage through the Appalachian Trail with his friend. And their decision, you know, these, these overweight guys, their decision to, to strike off on the Appalachian Trail the people that they meet along the Appalachian Trail and how they actually make the Appalachian Trail. Because, you know, uh, for those of you who may not be in the States, the Appalachian Trail is this really, really long hiking trail that goes all the way up the Appalachian Mountains and spits itself out at, at the, at the north, uh, northernmost part of our country. And, uh, and so this is Bill Bryson kind of working up the, the courage and then setting out with his friend to, uh, to, to make this walk in the woods it's hilarious. It's such a dry <laughs> sense of humor, and uh, I, I very much uh, recommend it. I also recommend uh, from Bill Bryson, um, The Mother Tongue. If you're interested in how English came to be, this could be a good connection with your Shakespeare uh, learning. The Mother Tongue is a really good book, too. In fact, I'm typing it down so we can put it in our show notes. All of these, of course, will be available in our show notes for you at catholicunderground.com. And then if you're a youngin, I'm actually on book four of the Percy Jackson series. I am not following uh, Pap Rocky's uh, in the chat room recommendation. He says, as a rule, I don't read books younger than me. If they're around that long, they're good books. If they've been around that long, they're good books. I love Jack London's Seawolf um, as a great guy book. 
So yes, uh, I tend to I tend to read all sorts of things. Uh, I'll, I'll read things that are much older than I am, like the Old Testament. I'll also read uh, things that are slightly younger than I am too. So the Percy Jackson series uh, has been really good. Kathleen, did you ever read any of the Percy Jackson? I didn't. It, well, you know, it, it might be one of those things that that only guys like, kind of like the Twilight series. Because I tried to read book one of the Twilight series. No, I did like the and Twilight I, series, and I couldn't because there is something about reading. Reading through the eyes of a teenage girl that I just couldn't <laughs> connect with, oh. but but reading through the eyes of this uh, this teenage guy, or, or I guess he's middle school, so uh, uh, just just after teen guy, uh, uh, Percy Jackson, um, I can connect with that. So I don't know, but if you got a, a young person, these are really these are kind of good books uh, to to read, just good uh, good fiction. I noticed that we we've um, Bryson, I think, is the only nonfiction book uh, that. Uh, that we've we've listed here in the books on non faith. Of course, we've talked about Father the importance of good fiction, right? You know, fiction is hugely important, and and uh, I think it's it's when it comes to gift giving. Yeah. If you give someone a book that is non fiction, that does, that's not a narrative. That's just kind of a, you know, it's going to be hard for them to get excited about it. If you give them a fictional book, they can just dig into. Right. Yeah. I think it's good. And good fiction. Uh, we say this all the time, but good fiction is just you, you, when you can lose yourself in a universe that's been painted for you. And you really believe the universe. Like, for example, I'm reading uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire as well. And uh, they just described the um, the Quidditch arena for the World Series uh, Quidditch Cup. And the way that, that Rowling writes it, you really are there. She, she can create a universe that you, that you believe. In fact, as I was reading the book, because I saw the movies first, I was thinking to myself, they really... It's a good thing she writes the way that she does because they had no work to do when it came to putting this stuff together in the CGI yeah. computer. You know, they, they had really described everything very well. And so those are some of our book recommendations on the non-faith category. And so we move on to books in the faith category. From the Catholic underground. So you want to give a book and you want it to be faith based. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and start off here. I actually picked this book up because I've been seeing little quotes from it on Facebook all the time, and finally I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick this book up. Uh, Saint Jose Maria Escrivá's The Way, his 999 little little uh, snippets that are meant to be, um, as as he says, meant to be chewed on slowly. And in the same way that, that you would kind of ruminate over a Bible verse, um, his little n- booklet uh, book here of, of these little snippets of, of spiritual reading are meant to give you something to, to ruminate on and to maybe take into your heart. And he says, I want this to be um, my speaking to you as a father or as a brother. And so that would be one of my recommendations by way of book is the way uh, by Saint Jose Maria Escriva. If you've got maybe um, somebody who spends a lot of time at home, maybe a, an elderly parent or grandparent, uh, that could be a really good book. I, I'm looking at you, Kathleen, maybe for your dad. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh huh. Um, also, uh, uh, Michael D. O'Brien's The Father's Tale. It is a really good book. Uh, I would recommend this for uh, for giving to your dad if you've got a dad who likes to read, um, or even maybe a brother that likes to read. This is a really good book. It's about uh, a father who chases his son halfway across the world uh, be, he, because the son has fallen in with the wrong crowd. And so it very much is uh, the, the story almost of the father from the tale of the prodigal son as much as it is the story of the prodigal son. So that's, uh, that's my recommendation. Lord of the World by Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson is kind of the pre-pre-prequel to uh, a book that Father Ryan and I both like, Father Elijah, whom he'll talk about in a minute. But uh, Lord of the World was written at the turn of last century, and it's about a priest who has to confront the Antichrist. And the Christ, the Antichrist actually looks remarkably like the, the main character in the story, so they're kind of a doppelganger type mm. of thing. Written at the turn of last century, but it's science fiction and it's religious fiction. Very, very cool book. Um, fit for Eternal Life. Um, this is kind of a faith-based book and kind of not. Um, if you want to learn a little more about fitness, about uh, about bodily fitness, but you're trying to figure out how to maybe make a connection with your faith life, Dr. Kevin Vos does that very well, spinning Aquinas and a lot of the, uh, the pre-Christian thinkers um, whom Aquinas uh, kind of co-opted as he was developing his Summa. 
um, he connects that with physical fitness, spiritual fitness, and uh, and emotional fitness. And so Fit for Eternal Life is a good book. And then Toward the Gleam, if you want a really good um, mystery book, Toward the Gleam is very good by T.M. Doran that I recommend. Uh, Kathleen, you've got uh, a couple books here too. Yeah, I want to start with um, one. I've been looking for some... Um just some writings by uh, Pope Francis, and uh, just to kind of get into his mind a little bit. And there's mm-hmm. not, I haven't found a lot out there that, you know. He hasn't uh, written much. Yeah, That's... but I did find this book. I'll, I'll, I brought it with me. Oh, she brought it this with me. This book here um, is called Encountering Christ, and it's uh, homilies, letters, um, and addresses oh. of Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio. And so it's from 2009 to uh, right before he became Pope in 2000. Uh, 13 this year Mm -hmm. and um it gives you a whole uh, you know a whole list of uh categories so like for catechists he has two christmas eve homilies in here there's a huge section on linton homilies and messages um easter vigil i mean really just really good stuff um in fact it's got two sections in here if you're looking for a uh a gift for your priest um, it has two um homilies and addresses for priests and homilies and addresses for bishops so um, it's yeah. just really cool to get, and you know, I've, I've read a couple of them, and it's just, it's the way he is. You know, it's not it's not surprising, but it's so deep and so simple at the same time. Um, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. He talks about uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict in here, and it's really, really pretty cool. So um, Encountering Christ. The second one I have, I, I picked up a few years ago at Comic-Con, and I didn't ever. Oh, Catholicon. Catholicon. <laughs> I w- Kathleen, if you go to Comic Con no. before I do, there's gonna be blood. Like, I was looking just at you gonna like, say. I'm sorry, Catholic Con. I knew it. It was in my head. It's anyway, okay. um, I picked up this book, New The Church and New Media, blogging converts, online activists, and bishops who tweet by Brandon Voigt, and it is awesome. It, it talks about how do we as Catholics um, use these as tools, um, use uh, Facebook, blogging, uh, Twitter. Uh, Instagram, whatever you use, how do you use that to evangelize? And really, yeah. um, you know, working on this show and talking about the digital continent, um, it's been a really cool thing to read. And, and you know, he talks about the reality of our church and how um, young people, especially young adults, um, just are not there. They check out. They, they go somewhere and then they don't come back until they get married or have babies. And so how do we use where they are yeah. to reach them? So, um that's a really cool book. And a book that I haven't quite picked up yet, but it's on my list, is um, Life Lessons from My Life with my brother Timothy Cardinal Dolan oh. by his brother Bob Dolan. Um, I love, I love Cardinal Dolan. Um, He's kind of like the male version of you. You were, Yeah. <laughs> I never said that out loud. I'm so glad that somebody did because he <laughs> is so funny. And he's so like, but, you know, what I love about him is he... Uh, He's so funny and so like, ha ha. And then it's like somebody attacks the church and he's like, I ain't playing around anymore. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, okay. And so I'm, I, so that's on my list of um, possible Christmas gifts. Mm. <laughs> Bling. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my yeah. three picks. Right. Um, you know, and they all, they're, they're all very exciting. I love them very much. Very cool. Father Ryan has a lot of faith-based books. I do a good bit of faith-based reading. <laughs> As a priest, uh, I Rightly do a lot so. of reading. Um. Yeah, there, there's a number I want to recommend. Uh, I want to recommend Dale Alquist's excellent book, In Defense of Sanity, uh, mm-hmm. which is essays by G.K. Chesterton, and they're wonderful. They're really, really good. Um, and so if you're looking for kind of a, a deep intellectual journey that you can kind of take in when you're, you know, doing your business in, in the bathroom, <laughs> um, it, it, this is the book for you. It's a great back-of-the-toilet book. Um, you know you've got them, Kathleen. I do. We all do. <laughs> um, I also want to recommend uh, by Ian Kerr. Ian Kerr is a spectacular biography writer. He did one on Ben Franklin that is astounding. Uh, and Ian Kerr has a book on John Henry Newman that is second to none. It is the oh. definitive biography of John Henry Newman. It is spectacularly well put together. It's expensive, but it's a great book. And it's the kind of book that I'd love somebody to buy for me. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, also, Maria Montessori of Montessori School fame wrote a book called The Mass Explained for Children. Um, that's so, so good. 
Um, it's about the old mass, but it is a wonderful little book about the spirituality of liturgy in general. Wow. And, uh, and it's, it's great. It's very accessible, very readable. Also from Chesterton, you have the Father Brown series. These are fictional stories about Father Brown, a priest detective, something along the lines of Father Dowling. Yeah. I you know remember you're a Father, Father Dowling Dow- fan. I love Father some Brown Father series Dowling. Is wonderful. You know Tom yeah. Bosley on the on the was was before it was the Hallmark Channel. I forget what he was on, but he was a priest who solved mysteries with a wily nun. You never saw that, Kathleen. I know. Oh, we're gonna have to find what service serves that and get it to her stat. Yeah, but. it's it's the Father Dowling mysteries are wonderful, and that that basically comes from the Father Brown stories. Yeah. Um, you also have G.K. Chesterton's Orthodoxy, which. People tend to think is difficult to read, but it's it's wonderfully accessible, and it's a great book to give somebody for Christmas. Uh, so is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. So are the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. If you're in the fictional mode, Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Woe uh, is one of those classic pieces of literature that is it's faith. It's not faith at the same time. It's wonderful. Um, Michael O'Brien, uh, Father Ch- Chris talked about him before. Father Elijah is the first book that he published. The book was written entirely in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. Um, wow. And it is it is one of the most terrifying and yet uplifting and astounding books I've ever read. Um, it's one I think I've read now seven times and, and yeah. uh, I'm just around the corner from starting again. Yep, I usually um, read it every year, beginning of the year. I've got two recommendations from Bishop Fulton Sheen. The first is Life of Christ, which is kind of a great wonderful meditation on the scriptures and the gospels. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But he also wrote a book called Three to Get Married. Uh, and and given the mess that we have about marriage and family in our culture right now, Three to Get Married is awesome. And uh, so I strongly recommend Three to Get Married by Fulton Sheen. Connected also, to that, Father, if I may, I believe that Lighthouse Media has uh, the audio version of Three to Get Married. Oh, do they really? I, I do believe so. Um, so it's I guess it's probably him giving the talk that that book is based on. It could be. Yeah, that'd be it'd be very cool. I'd love to look more about that. Yeah. Um, George Weigel's book Letters to a Young Catholic is really impressive. Um, I, I know so I may make some people angry. I think evangelical Catholicism is a stinky book. I, I've read it now through, and I, I have I just don't agree with anything Weigel's trying to get at in that book. Um, I think he he completely missed the mark. But Letters to a Young Catholic is astoundingly well done. It is easily one of the best books he'll ever pen, probably second only to the the epic biography of John Paul II, Witness to Hope. Right. Um, Some people Letters use it to, to prop up their toilet. It's so large. <laughs> it's very <laughs> it's big. Gigantic. It's a good book, though. It is. It is. And uh, so two more to survive through. One is Diane Mokzar's excellent book, Ten Dates Every Catholic Should Know. Hmm. Uh, little history book. She has probably 15 or 20 little books like this. Just simple, easy to read history kind of books that are great to read. And finally, I want to end with, and this is a recommendation exclusively for teachers. Every teacher must read C.S. Lewis's Abolition of Man. Every person in, who is being forced to, to, to take down Common Core, who is having to look into that, who is, who is asking questions, needs to read the very short little book, Abolition Man. I read it in two hours. It is absolutely indispensable. And so if you have a teacher, pass it to them. Um, Give the gift of this book to teachers because if only a couple of them will read it, it will absolutely change their perspective on education in the United States. That's right. It helps you to begin to ask good questions. And good literature does that, right? It helps you to ask deep questions. Yeah, exactly. Um, in in the chat room, Paparaki says, besides the fact that that he knows uh, Dale, is it Dale Kerr? Ian Kerr, Dale Alquist. Dale Alquist, sorry, Dale Alquist. Um, uh, in defense of sanity, the best essays of G.K. Chesterton. We've had uh, Dale on uh, on some of our radio programs here on Catholic Radio, and uh, so uh, so Paparaki knows him personally. So, Father, you might be able to get your autographed copy that way. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, he says that there's an audio version uh, of the screw tape letters narrated by John Cleese of Monty Python fame. I've heard it before, and it's very good. It's outstanding. So I'm sure you can. I'm sure there's a download uh, somewhere of it um, that that you can that you can get. Um, because really, screw tape letters. I would say any any Christian who is searching for um, a deeper understanding of what it means to grind through the daily life of being a follower of Christ. 
in the same way you recommend the abolition of man, I would say the the screw tape letters is uh, is important to for for a Christian to read. Because I remember I didn't get the fact that spiritual warfare was real until um, really I read this book, and then it kind of opens your eyes a little bit, and you go, "Oh man, well that explains why that's going on, or maybe that explains why this is happening in my life." You know, and it was really I, I found it a really really good book. Uh, C.S. Lewis had a very good understanding of spiritual warfare, I find anyway. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, Father, do you have another book to... No, that's that's the list there. That's the that's my pile of, uh, of books I recommend, and they're all in the show notes. So I know I went through them very, very quickly, but they're all in the show notes there. That's okay. Well, why don't we take the opportunity to go ahead and uh, move on to the other stuff. You are listening to The Catholic Underground. I'm Father Chris Decker. We've got Kathleen Lee sitting right here to my left. Uh, You're right. And uh, Father Ryan, who joins us via Skype. And Mary Kate Taylor, who is in the Bat Cave there, switching the video for us on CUTV's live feed. We're going over all the things that you might consider for gift giving whenever the Christmas season rolls around. And we've been talking about books, and now we move into stuff. Not to be confused with mammon, you know, um, but uh, but some of the stuff that you might give uh, is is religious gift, and uh, I know that especially in Christian circles, uh, there there's no shortage of what even in the marketing industry they call Jesus junk. I'm not kidding; they call it that, and it's stuff that is kind of a of a generic Christian nature, but doesn't actually speak to you. I mean, Father, how many ceramic crosses that are ill painted have you received in your life as a priest? Almost as many as I have framed copies of footprints. That's right, exactly. Aww. You see, and so, and so we're we're talking not necessarily about about those sort of mass produced in China kind of gifts that we hope that the Chinese folks who are making them are experiencing a deep conversion as they as they uh, make these things, um, but we're talking about uh, some things that might aid your prayer, and of course, uh, a ceramic cross may do that, you know. Um, but uh, my my primary recommendation for religious stuff is something that I use quite often, and actually I have seen pictures of Pope Francis with one of these. It is, and we've talked about it on the show before, a chotki. And a chotki is not like the thing that sits in front of an airplane wheel. That's a chalk, Kathleen. Chalk. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, pull chalks, but you pray a chotki. And so uh, a chotki is, is the Eastern rosary, if you want, and it's, uh, it's used to, uh, to pray the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. And uh, they come in several different varieties. They have the 33-knot one, the 50-knot one, the 100, 150, and 300. And, um, and this is one of those beautiful things because sometimes, I know for me, uh, as much as I like to pray the rosary from time to time, uh, sometimes I want a prayer that is uh, maybe a little bit more mantric that I don't have to give a whole, whole lot of thought to. And, uh, I mean, really, the, the beautiful thing about the rosary is you're supposed to, as you're praying the prayers uh, with your mouth, be giving voice to all of the mysteries that you're meditating upon in your heart. Uh, the chotki is, is, that, is the Jesus prayer, and that's simply recited one on each bead. And so that might be a good, if you want, alternative uh, Catholic gift because uh, they're used more, more certainly in the Eastern Church and the Orthodox faith, uh, but they come really out of uh, out of our tradition of uh, of praying those those uh, cycled prayers uh, like the Jesus Prayer, and so my uh, religious recommendation would be a chotki. Kathleen, you've got uh, a person here. Yes, well, actually, um, he is a jewelry maker. So oh, for oh, those of for you the looking ladies. for a special gift for your lady Mm -hmm. um james avery jewelry um is is my recommendation now james avery um was became a jeweler in the 1950s um and after a conversion he came back to the church and that started to reflect in his jewelry and so it's not um you know he does a lot of of non-religious jewelry but he also does um just some beautiful pieces that that are faith related um both christian and catholic and jewish um so you know, um, one of the things that I was looking at this year was he has um, a replica of a widow's mite. You know, cool things like that. Wow. And so you so you go and and um, you know, there's of course crosses. There's he has all kinds of charms um, to commemorate things like baptisms and first communion and um, 
but they each come with a you can get it with a little story you know so i i like this because um they're just some unique pieces yeah um and they come from a place where you know they're not just selling these things that they don't know what they're about you know um when i went in and i was looking at these pieces they were telling me about them as if you know as if i didn't know what they were um yeah. so so it's a it's really quality jewelry it's not super expensive depending on how you um you know what your price range is but it's really good stuff my second um, recommendation is a group called All Sons and Daughters. Hmm. Um, it's a music group. Um, they have some really. It's a really cool sound. Like it doesn't really sound like you know, your typical praise and worship. Um, but uh, my favorite CD of theirs is called Brokenness Aside. Hmm. I mean, it was it was a couple years old, but they have a couple of new CDs out. Um, so for that music lover in your life. Who uh, maybe not is a is maybe not a praise and worship kind of person, but yeah. um, it's got a cool little sound to it. So I would check out um, All Sons and Daughters. They have a couple of CDs for you to to pick from. Very cool. You know this this James Avery website. I'm just browsing it here as we're speaking. Has some really unique stuff. And I mean, I'm not I'm not really a, a jewelry wearer. Yeah. Um. But but some really authentically beautiful things. And for Father Ryan, there's also a free form Texas pendant. Yay! So you could the ring I wear, like if you can. Oh, if you're watching too. The the ring I wear is James James Avery. Yeah, and it's it's really nice. Some of the pieces I've seen, um, but I really like some of the bas relief things. You know, there there's a one of a cardinal and all sorts of neat things. Yeah, yeah, it's got some good stuff. Very cool. So this this might be some some good ideas for gift giving because priests tend to give gifts to their family too. So yeah. that's uh, that's very cool. Well, uh, Father Ryan, you have some more uh, devotionally uh, minded items uh, for for your religious stuff recommendations. Right. One of the things I always recommend this time of year because it's it's an easy gift. It's not particularly expensive, and frankly, it's just one of those things we don't think about. Is you can get somebody a nice rosary. That's always a nice thing. It's always appreciated. Rosaries get lost and broken on a regular basis. Um, a chapel veil is a really neat thing to get a lady who may want to, you know, some someone may not want to invest or they may not know whether they're interested or not in that, you know, and just kind of, hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, chapel bills are not incredibly expensive, $20, $30 for a very nice one. Um, and so that might be something that a lady might be interested in trying on a lady in your life. Uh, don't forget the brown scapular and the green scapular, both very, very important devotions. Um, and they're the kind of thing that it's easy to forget and, you know, you take yours off or you lose it and you look up and it's been six months and you don't have a new one yeah um and then of course i statues statues are so so appreciated even smaller ones Mm -hmm. um and with john paul ii being prepared to be canonized as a saint um it's definitely a good time to get some people in your life some john paul ii statues and uh, and don't forget saint philomena one of my personal devotions and somebody who deserves a lot more respect than she gets nowadays and so uh so rosaries, chapel veils, brown scap, or things like that, those are good stock things you can pick up either on the interwebs or uh, at, at a religious good shop, and, and they're good things to just kind of pass around. That's right. Uh, St. Philomena, that great saint of purity. Um, when Actually, that's not a bad idea. Whenever you're thinking about giving a statue to someone, don't just kind of say, hey, here's a JP2, but, but what saint could that person most benefit from by way of intercession? You know, I've, I've given away a few St. Michael the Archangel uh, statues, you know, uh, for, for that reason. But that's a good thing to think about, too, if you're one of those intentional gift givers. is What, what saint uh, would you like interceding for, for that person in your life? And oftentimes, if it's a beautiful statue, even if the person is kind of freaked out by it, they're not going to throw it away. Yeah, it's you know? harder to throw away a statue. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. Uh, and so now we move on to the not necessarily religious stuff in tech. All righty. Uh, I'm going to start with a recommendation that I actually stumbled upon because uh, one of my spiritual directees, by the way, we need to set an appointment, um, it has been using for a while the Google Chromecast. I didn't really want to buy one at 35 bucks, but uh, I said, eh, uh, I'll go ahead and use it uh, for $29.99. So they, they came down in price a little bit. And basically the Google Chromecast, its only job is to... Uh, uh, broadcast tabs from your Chrome browser on your television. Um, it can also broadcast uh, your Hulu uh, Plus account from your iPhone or your YouTube account from your phone or from your Chrome browser. And it's really, really helpful. In fact, um, I have to do a little, a little work with our, our uh, internet here at the, uh, at the radio station. 
but I'm going to start using the Google Chromecast so that we can show our screen to you whenever, uh, like this show would have been good, to show you some of the things that, uh, that we're, we're talking about if you're watching us on the CUTV stream. But this is also helpful, too, whenever um, you're, uh, you, maybe you're one of those folks who says, oh, man, let's watch a couple of things on YouTube. Well, the Chromecast is, again, it's 30 bucks, and it's kind of like a, I wouldn't say a poor man's Apple TV, but it's a, a man's Apple TV when he doesn't need to do all the things that an Apple TV does. And so, uh, so you can plug this in the HDMI port. It's HDMI uh, accessible, and then there's it's powered by USB. So either the USB in your television, or it comes, and this is a rare thing, it comes with the, uh, the adapter to plug it into the wall. So the Google Chromecast is my first uh, item. And the second one is actually something I picked up on a whim. Um, my, my friends Nick and Becca, uh, God bless them, they came to visit me, and we went out to eat, and their car broke down. Their battery was dead. So I said, well, there's only one thing to do. That's to go to the nearest big box store. And so we did. And uh, I picked up some jumper cables for them. And uh, I also, because uh, like Father Ryan and I know, the ad limited visit is always whenever you go to a big box store, you have to pass by electronics. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, I bought a movie on a whim um, called The Hunters. And it's by ARC Entertainment. And it's one of those movies that is made uh, and distributed specifically at Walmart stores. Oh, yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's family friendly. And I've actually bought a couple of these now. And this one was awesome awesome it was uh it, it's about these these two brothers whose parents are kidnapped and the parents are actually um it's basically joe catholic sadly uh it's uh, th their job is to to find all of these artifacts uh, that are that are real from the fairy tale world oh, yeah. and to protect them kathleen you would like it too i think i might like yes it. you would and and so that's uh, that's my other recommendation the hunters from arc entertainment it's good family friendly entertainment uh, kathleen I picked, um, because I love to give gifts, and I love to give gifts with a meaning. Yeah. Um, and my third thing is I love to give gifts that benefit someone else. So um, I picked Crochet Kids, and it's crochet with a, uh, with a K. Um, and Crochet Kids is, is a group of young guys who got together, and they wanted to, um, they went to Uganda, and they wanted to help out uh, with the poverty level. And so what they did in Uganda and, and Peru um, is they created... Um, opportunities for the women there to knit these hats oh. um, and they're really really cool hats I mean they're just all kinds of different styles and so these women make these hats and they are able to receive the money and to help them you know rise out of poverty and so they have a lot of different um, styles of hats colors of hats different kind of um, you know scarves that kind of thing um, it's really really good quality um, I've gotten a few things from them. It's, you know, pretty, uh, you know, it's about 20, 30 bucks on average. Um, but they're really yeah, cool Yeah, this hats. is a nice gift idea. Yeah. And like you say, they're they're what you would pay in a store. Yeah, and, and I always love to give Less, some, actually. Yeah, I always love to give somebody something and say, hey, this is the story behind this. Right. You know, not just I went down to, to the mall, picked this up, and it's for you. But, hey, this this is what happens behind behind this hat mm -hmm. and so it's really cool is sewn into every hat or item they have the name of whoever whoever wrote it i mean whoever um whoever made it mm -hmm. so um gives you an opportunity to, to have that connection um it's pretty cool another thing that i really really like and this is kind of in general is just buying things from local craft people mm -hmm. um i went down to the farmer's market on sunday here in baton rouge and they have a, a, a craft fair and it's really cool just to go through and support these local businesses i know we have like small business saturday um after crazy black friday right um but i love doing that i love something that comes from home comes from where i where i am um and represents kind of kind of yeah my neighborhood you that's know that's right so yeah, that's those, not really something specific, but... That's cool, but those are good gifts to give uh, yeah. to those, maybe your friends from out of state, uh, something yeah. that's quintessentially from Louisiana. Yeah, that's not an actual, like, in the shape of a Louisiana, you know. Yeah, but oh. could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Father Ryan, uh, you're you're up last here, but not least. Well, I hope not. Uh, I've got a couple of just kind of random things that have really worked out for me in the last year and that I want to recommend to people. One is is completely outlandish, and that is just paella. Um, hey. Paella is, is is the name of the pot. It's the name of the dish. It is one of become one of my favorite things to make, and it's so much easier than it seems. Uh, paella is a Spanish dish that involves rice, saffron, and the fancy kind of paprika. I like and, all uh, those things together. 
oh, it's delicious, you know. And so uh, I really want to encourage people to try on paellas. They are not as hard as they seem, and they're really yummy. Um, but in terms of things you can buy for other people, uh, Calphalon cookware. I have really had a great year with Calphalon cookware. Uh, in Orlando, there is actually a Calphalon outlet store, which is awesome. Mm. But uh, but Amazon does a pretty good job of discounting it. And a good pot or a good pan is a great gift. And, you know, $25, you can buy somebody a decent Calphalon, you know, um, omelet-style pan or something like that. And that that's just a great gift. Um, I also recommend for guys in your life, you may want to try giving them some kind of hipster shaving stuff. So uh, I recommend shave, Taylor hipsters. of Old Bond Street <laughs> for uh, for your for your uh, shaving cream, and I recommend Merker razors, which are by far the best uh, razors you can buy. And it, yes, it does matter. Don't buy the off brand. Hmm. Um, so hipster shaving stuffs are cool. And I also want to recommend if you just got some money lying around, the MacBook Air has absolutely blown my mind. 10 hours of battery life on a regular basis. Uh, it's light. It's great. It's it's held up to a little bit of a beating. Uh, I've, I'm blown away by the quality of this product. And so if you're looking for a laptop, the MacBook Air has more power than I thought it would and is really turned into a great thing. So uh, any of those or all those would be great gifts to give to somebody. Very cool. And uh, there's a really good one from the chat room. Paparaki says a creche is a great gift for a newly married couple. That's a great idea. You know, to buy a, a nativity set, a manger scene for maybe a couple that's just gotten married. Because that's one of the things that, you know, I, maybe the couple wants to get it themselves. But how nice it would be if you maybe start their collection. You know, yeah. if you get one that, that's kind of one of those collectible pieces ones. Yeah, so you get them the, the, the Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. And then maybe the little, yeah, I think that's a great way to go. All righty. Well, uh, that is our Picks of the Year show. And, uh, and we want to say that portions of the Catholic Underground are brought to you by audibletrial.com slash Catholic Underground. That's audibletrial.com slash Catholic Underground. We also want to say thank you to all of you who have supported us throughout the year. You've supported us with your prayer. You've supported us by being in the chat room. You've supported us by your financial contributions to keep us going. Remember, we're an apostolate that's fueled by you and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you're not praying for us, then we will certainly fail. And if the Holy Spirit's not with us, well, then we don't even need to come into work. Uh, so, so we thank you for all that you do for us. For the show notes that accompany this episode and the podcast, if you want to find out more about our apostolate, if you want to find out ways to connect with us on Twitter or Facebook, head over to catholicunderground.com to do that. Father Ryan's church is online at minorbasilica.org. He's at FR Humphreys on Twitter. Thank you, Father Ryan. Happy to do it. Kathleen Lee is the faith ninja at Kathleen Y-A-B-R. Thank you, Kathleen. Anytime. And Mary Kate Taylor is an evangelist, and in her spare time... She talks like a pirate. R. You know me. I'm Father Chris Decker. You can follow me on Twitter at Digital Catholic. You can join us on the interwebs at CatholicUnderground.tv for even more from the Catholic Underground. Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us on the digital continent. We're Catholic Underground. We are Faith Gone Digital. And we, my friends, will see you next time.